We could title this devotion, God Cares, Part 2. God Cares, Part 2. We're going to be looking at a seemingly arbitrary commandment. In Deuteronomy chapter 25, I realize that this is from yesterday's reading, but this commandment is quoted twice by the Apostle Paul in the New Testament, once in 1 Corinthians 9 and another time in 1 Timothy 5. What is the commandment? Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 4. You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Don't muzzle the ox while it treads out the grain, meaning when an ox is working, let it eat the grain that is in front of its face. You might say, well, who cares? The ox belongs to the owner. Let the owner do with his ox what he wants to do. Why should God care about a cow? Apparently, God does care about the cow because ultimately it's his cow. God is the creator, and God has never relinquished ownership of his creation. We're using his cow, technically, and we are to care about the cow just as God cares about his creation and let the cow eat the grain when it treads it out. How does the Apostle Paul use it? Well, in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, the Apostle Paul uses it and applies it to pastors. Yes, a cow is like a pastor. Thanks, Paul. Well, he uses it to justify the fact that pastors should be paid. Thanks, Paul. (laughs) Pastors who work, pastors who preach ought to be paid. And just as you shouldn't muzzle an ox when it's treading out the grain. Paul is consistent in this. Let's take a look at then 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9, where the Apostle Paul quotes this. Let's go there. For it is written in the law of Moses... You shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. There it is. Is it for oxen that God is concerned? Does he not certainly speak for our sake? It is written for our sake, because the plowman should plow in hope, and the thresher thresh in hope of sharing in the crop. He goes to the principle of it and says that pastors who work in God's field ought to be paid for their labor. And that God's primary concern is the principle behind it that especially applies to people. That God's primary concern is for people. And I think he's so right that people should reflect God's heart in caring for their animals, in caring for their employees. But we see Jesus has the same value system. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, starting from verse 29. These are Jesus' words. Are not two sparrows for so... Apparently, Jesus has the same value system. Ah, this is just such a wonderful passage. I, you need to read it in context. There's, ah, anyway, for, um, Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, starting from verse 29. Matthew 10, 29. Jesus' words are not two sparrows sold for a penny and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. God cares about the sparrows. Not a single one dies without his notice, without his permission. Verse 31, fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. I love it. Yes, God cares about the sparrows. God cares about the cows. But he especially cares about his children. Yes, our God cares about us. And we have nothing then to fear. We don't have to be afraid. Even if we are the cow that, doesn't, that is, happens to be muzzled for the moment, God still cares. We do not need to be afraid. That is the clear teaching of the word of God. So who cares? God cares about the cow. God cares about the sparrows. 
God cares about us so much that he gave his only son to die and even raise him from the dead that he might give us to him and him to us. What's the conclusion then? We are left with a God who truly cares and has given ample proof of it by giving us his son. Cast all your cares upon him, the apostle Peter now says, for he cares for you. We worry so much. We fear what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what we're going to wear. We fear about that. We fear about provision in this life, but we need not fear. We need to trust. And with the, all the resources that he has already given, work hard knowing that he will keep us unmuzzled and he will care for us. And when we go without, it is ultimately for our good. He who is able to do above and beyond all that we, we ask or think, all that we can ask or think, loves us more than we can possibly imagine. God cares. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do cast all of our cares upon you. Even if we should not have all of the resources, Lord, at our disposal, we, tr- we know who has all the resources that we need. And we know who is all the resource and treasure for us that we will ever desire. We trust in you, lean into you, cast all our cares upon you. And we do this as worship. We pray that you would receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm coming undone This walk can often feel lonely No matter what Until this race is won I will stand my ground Where hope can be found I will stand my ground Where hope can be found Oh Lord, oh Lord, I know Take all that is wrong and 
make 